The massive update for Texas Chainsaw Massacre is here. Hans and Maria are in the game, but bigger than that even are the skill tree changes. Everyone's characters are completely reset, and all of the skill trees are literally static. Before there was random nodes, all of that is gone. As you can see here, you're basically starting from new. Uh, if you're looking just for like a hitchhiker, you can see left side seems to be sort of the, uh, the dinner bell... Uh, Venom Scout build, so you pretty much have the same thing going on there, and, and you still have uh, Suffocating Grip, and uh, you know nobody escapes hell. But as far as the other characters, I have seen absolute crazy shakeups, and the meta is almost gone. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but also a big learning curve for a lot of people. Is everyone's builds are gonna be different, and uh, it's gonna make for a fun time, I think. But more importantly, we are gonna be looking at the builds for Hans and Maria. I'm not going to go into what I think is going to be the best build in the world. I am just going to simply look at all of the perks and uh, see what we're cooking up with uh, Hans and Maria. I think the first things first is to unlock the whole tree by just going through. Obviously, there's so many different perks here. As you can see, we are going all over the place. I'm going to have to respec, and then we will basically uh, know the whole tree and see what we're looking at. Before we look at those, let's take a look at his actual ability, Rip Stall, for his lockdown and exit interactions by ripping fuses out of the fuse box, valve handles from the tank, and restarting the generator and car battery quicker. For his first levels, it's reduce electric trap setup time. Pretty straightforward, as it takes 10% less time to uh, set up an electric trap. Defensive barge stamina cost reduced by 10%, or Rip Stall cooldown reduction by 20%, which I'm trying to think of like how strong that could be is it unlimited so like let's say there's only two or three fuses on the map if you do that three times and the fuse is unusable is that gg or does it reset the progress i wonder then you have the reduce electric trap setup time which is 20 percent. which of course at the bottom left was where it was so did they mix up all of these as well or what's the story then you have middle which is 20 percent uh, reduce stamina cost when doing the defensive barge, and then ripstall cooldown reduction by 40%. Then level 3, ripstall increases melee damage by 10% for 30 seconds, which could be interesting. Defensive barge does 30% more damage at level 3, or after performing a ripstall, the object will gain an instant electric trap. This has one charge. Wait a minute, that could be strong. Interesting. So, like, the, the fuse, the valve, all that, whatever, becomes... Like, I don't know what the actual damage or, you know, kind of effect of this electric traps that he has are going to be, uh, you know. But if it's good, that is actually kind of strong. I'm thinking the... Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be pretty damn strong. But either way, let's take a look at the perks. So, you can see Barrier Breaker, which is insane. Perk Holder can break obstacles. Higher levels allow them to break the obstacle 10% quicker, 30% quicker. When it's white, though, I'm pretty sure that means it's a uh, unique perk. Uh, it literally says unique on the thing, which means that only he can get it. But that means you can have another character breaking barriers now. You know, when we heard about him being able to trap stuff like barriers and whatnot, that's what we thought. But he can also break them. That seems like it, be, it might be a must-have. Then if you go left, you have short fuse. When a victim is shocked by an electric trap, that victim is highlighted to the perk holder for 7 seconds. I wonder if there's audio cues similar to the trap for Hitchhiker. If so, might not be that necessary, especially since you can't show other players on your team that. Uh, and then you have Bruiser on the other side, which is another unique perk. Victims hit by defensive barge attack take an additional 15 damage. Kind of giving me, like, uh, activated vibes, actually. No, is it activated? Whatever the one is where you can, like, uh, door slam harder. I don't know. Uh, brute Strength is a perk. Sip, sip, sip is on him. Not a huge fan of this, but melee attacks give 30% more blood in your vial, but attack damage is reduced by 20% at the max level. Blunt Force Trauma attacks gain a concussive hit. Uh, if above 50% stamina, usually those concussive hits aren't too strong in fairness. Then you have wired victims climbing over your ob uh, ob obstacles are highlighted to you for 12 seconds. Once again, a highlighted to you type of situation. Any other perks? Spring clean. Uh, before grandpa activates, your stamina consumption is reduced by 30% all the way up to 70%. That is probably not going to bring you much value, to be honest. Like, if assuming he can have scout... 
which I see right here, you might as well just go scout, right? I mean, that's you, you get faster speed, which equals technically stamina reduction because stamina reduction allows you to run longer, but at least you with the speed, you know, you get it. Uh, but looking at the tree, you start off only being able to go two directions, uh, which to me, I don't know if you can make your way back over for scout anyways, but you think you would want to start with the left, so that's what I'm going to do here real quick. Then you have a choice between Chicken Whisper, which also gives you a chance at Universal Donor. Punishment is not really that good. Unrelenting could be decent. Blood Banker if you're going Blood Build. So you could have a Blood Build with them straight up. It seems like you're able to land Universal Donor, Blood Banker, and Scout with him. As far as your Grandpa perks go, though, it doesn't seem, unless I'm missing something here, that you're going to be looking too pretty with that. Uh, and then if you go to the right side instead, you have Bruiser, uh, I would imagine, maybe not Sip, 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 actually. You might go left. I'm just going to take a, a Wild Gander at these perks real quick. So, uh, wait, do you have to go straight to get this? Oh, you can't. I didn't notice that they cut off. You can't get Universal Donor with um, Blood Banker. I'm not a huge fan of this because obviously if you go left, you're kind of limited Ooh, slow hands. This is interesting. Victims that trigger an electric trap complete hold and tap interactions 40% slower than normal for the next 60 seconds. Seems a little, like, specific. Uh, but, yeah, you're definitely going to want to get to scout, I'd imagine, because as far as, like, his attributes go, you can see his endurance is 15. So I can't imagine he's the fastest character, especially with stamina stuff. Uh, you also have the chance at rubber boots. Big Swings is on the right side, though, which is definitely interesting. Wind Doom. Uh, what else do you have? You have um, Nobody Escapes Hell on that right side. I'm trying to think if you... Because you obviously want Scout. You can get Universal Donor. I'm going to try going middle, I think. So you obviously can go middle. You're not really getting much damage perks, though. It really comes down to what kind of... I mean, he has really good damage on his own. As far as, like, a scout build, which is what most people are going to be running, this is kind of the gist of what you're going to get. We're going to build a scout build, and then we're going to do a big swings build. And then you guys can be like, eh, you know, I don't know which one's better. But obviously with the uh, scout build, you're going to be getting Blood Banker. Yeah, I suppose. So, uh, you're not Blood Banker. Uh, Universal Donor. So, scout, Universal Donor, and then the, you know, the initial perk of being able to break barriers. That's not a bad build, I don't think. That might even be the build I run with. Uh, I'm probably missing some perks in here, am I? It has got to be some that I'm missing there. There's one. Once again, not seeing very good grandpa perks on this side. Um, but am I? I'm still missing some. Oh, there they are. The three perks, I'm pretty sure, right here. What's this one, actually? Rip stalled. After using the rip stall ability on an object, the object cannot be interacted again by anyone for 30 more seconds. You would assume that's going to be an automatic 30 to 1 minute automatically, but I'm not 100% sure. You also have heart attack. A victim's bleed out increases for 180 seconds if they trigger an electric trap or are hit by the perk holder's barge. That could be strong, too. But as, like, a basis, which a lot of people would be like, they're going to gravitate towards... You know, the stamina stuff and the sprint and whatnot. This is the build you can get for Scout, which I don't absolutely hate. I'm assuming you're going to want to do this. You're at least going to want to get a 30 if you have uh, the Blood Perk. He looks pretty strong already. 50 Savagery, 31 Blood Harvesting, and 25 Endurance. You might even be able to knock that Endurance down to 20, but... Just for the start, that's what I would do. And as far as his abilities go, you'd probably not want anything on unless your teammates have, you know, none of the cool good perks. If not, well, 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 probably is going to be your bets. So that's actually not a bad... Oh, yeah, we also have two executions, just like Grandma did with the chickens. So it looks like you snap their neck and then Nutcracker on your knees and so you bust their head open. Um, but... This is not a bad build, I don't think, to be honest. You probably want to run Barrier Breaker most of the times, as you're going to be able to, uh, you know, negate needing a Leatherface. Universal Donor, obviously, is a pretty good perk. You could also change it for probably either Heart Attack or Activated, I suppose. But I like this build so far. You could also go all the way left instead which would give you, you know, like, punishment too much. 
If you go all the way left and said you get Blood Banker instead of Universal Donor, which I don't think is really that good, I think you're going to want to do the build that I just did, or we're going to test out the right side real quick and see what we're looking at. So Bruiser, you can take an extra damage from a defensive barge. Still don't know what a defensive barge means because that sounds like you're not going to be able to control it. It sounds like if a... Uh, a victim runs into you like full blast on their own terms. That's what I think it is, anyways. Uh, if you go left, blunt force trauma attacks gain that stamina or that um, concussive a hit. Uh, if going left, you can end up with down the rabbit hole. Surgical could be decent. Uh, it looks like you can get all the way back over to um, scout though, which is interesting. If you go left, but even then, your choices would then be a little bit limited. You obviously can't get big swings with Scout. That's that's for sure. Uh, and then if you go left... So going left is okay, because you're going to get Surgical. You can end up going back to the right for Feral, though. But you're also losing Nobody Escapes Hell, it seems. So I think for this purpose, we're going to go to Sip, Sip, Sip. Dinner Bell. And you're, you're going to keep... Oh, you don't get Feral then, though. I'm not saying Feral's a needed perk here, but I think if you're not going Scout, I would rather go Feral than Sip, Sip, Sip. Personally, I've never really been someone that used Sip, Sip, Sip before, so... Going left means you can still get all that stuff there. So this is basically going to be your build if you're not doing Scout, I think. But once again, it seems like really no matter what you do... You're kind of looking at some pretty bad grandpa perks. Booby Trump, that is just such a waste. Uh, surgical might be used. Siphon is interesting, but obviously then you would have to go... Uh, siphon, though. So you can go Siphon, Surgical, Scout, maybe. But I think if you're not going to go Scout, you're going to want to go Big Swings. And of course, you do have Easily Tuckered Out, but... This is basically going to be your build if you're not doing scout, I think. So it's really weird, but you look at most of uh, Hans' abilities and his, like, his perk slots. Oh, you're getting also the um, respec glitch still, where you get more skill points when you respec it seems. But this is basically what he would look like. That savage would be maxed to 50, because obviously you'd have Feral adding that 4 to it. But with 34 blood harvesting and 25 endurance, obviously you can probably just go more endurance if you want. You know, maybe do something like this or whatever. But it seems like, weirdly enough, Hans is, like, basically a blood harvesting character, right? Because if you go the scout build, you have multiple blood harvesting perks there as well. It might just be like that for all the characters they change. But you can obviously see that Hitchhiker, the, uh, the Venom build is there just uh, automatically if you want it. But it is interesting that Hans, of all players, is is kind of a blood character, in my opinion, just the way I see it. But... This is probably going to be your build, you know, if you're going to be running non-scout. Personally, though, I think that original build we looked at, uh, maybe instead of Universal Donor, you can go uh, you can go Blood Banker. So you can hold more blood for when you get kills, you get all that blood instead of actually going for buckets. But very interesting. Like I said, I think he's kind of a blood character. It's a little weird, but... I kind of like it a little bit. And then we did all that yap, and it's time to look at Maria, whose main ability is, of course, causes Grandpa's sonar ability to highlight family members instead of victims. I'd imagine you have to use, uh, you know, get up close to him, which uh, obviously is going to activate it if you have this on. So I'd imagine it's something you press before you get up to Grandpa, or maybe there's a special button. But uh, looking at the cooldown, uh, cooldown delay reduced by one second. That is interesting. Wait, so is this something you can do unlimitedly? I'm so confused by one second cooldown delay. Then you have, of course, the duration of time that Grandpa has highlighted is increased to 15 seconds. That Grandpa has highlighted? Wait, I am so confused. Uh, and then, of course, reduce ability cooldown by 20%. Uh, then you look at the reduced cooldown delay by two percent so can you just spam grandpa is that what i'm hearing here i'm so confused uh decrease the time uh to sweet talk grandpa to two seconds okay so it might be a long animation is what that is pretty much telling you and then of course the cooldown time between uses of your sweet talk ability is reduced by 40 percent then you go to level three which is going to be pretty strong grandpa highlights family members on the next two sonars the next two. So, of course, the way this sounds is you can obviously do it multiple times, which means if you have this, 
you can kind of control Grandpa for the majority of the game if it's every two, basically. That's kind of insane. And of course, Grandpa highlights family members in close proximity to him. I mean, that's got somewhat strong because, of course, it seems like it's just uh, an ability that's automatically on. And then this one, a lot of people are probably going to be using. The first time you sweet talk Grandpa's level will be, will be reduced by 1%. I wonder if Maria is even able to stab Grandpa at all. Because you would think if he she stabbed him once, the sweet talk should be negated for the rest of the game. Because he's like, hold up. I liked you, but then you stabbed me. What are we doing here, you know? This is an interesting... This is like one of the more kind of up to interpretation kind of ability skill trees I've ever seen. Because like cooldown delay reduced by one second. Cooldown delay. Does that mean like when he yells? I am so confused by that. I might just be a dumb, but let's be honest. Uh, let's go into the skill tree, which of course you can see Bomb Squad exists immediately. Haven't went into any of the other characters, but that is definitely interesting to see right out the gate. Then one of her... Apparently not unique perks. Pep Talk. Sweet Talking Grandpa allows you to heal by 20% of your maximum HP. Also, don't know how that's not unique when that ability is unique, uh, which is interesting. Twinkle Toes. You have a 25% or 75% chance to not trigger bone charms while also completely avoiding chickens. Uh, very interesting. Uh, that's not obviously unique. Stunt doubles on that side. Hush or die when dropping below 5% health. Receive 15 points towards stealth. Okay, I don't know. Dr. Seuss is in the house. Uh, ran track, your endurance is up by 7%. Uh, so obviously it seems like you're... No, you get these automatically by going that way, and then you get to go right. There's a lot going on here. Blood Clock Cry. This is new, I believe. Receive 25 per health whenever Grandpa activates his sonar ability, has four charges. That could be insanely clutch. Of course, you don't really control that. But that is very interesting, how clutch that could be. Then when you're on the right side, you can go to No Cell, which then gives you the option of Efficient Backstabber or Light on Your Feet, which is, I mean, it's something. Don't really see many people use Light on Their Feet because everyone just kind of rushes out the gate anyways. Uh, but instead, if you wanted to go left instead of uh, No Cell, you could get Lucky Lockpicker, which is the first time you do a lockpick. Talk and Run. After Sweet Talking Grandpa, stamina consumption is reduced by 75% for 20 seconds. Interesting. Of course, it depends on how long that uh, lasts. Because you could, like, arguably, let's say the gen is off on Family House, and there are people out there, you know, and you're going to try to run it. You could Sweet Talk Grandpa and then run out that front door, and you have that 20-second, 20 20 75% stamina consumption reduction. A little, you know... Kind of uh, niche, but still something. Cover recovery, stamina recovery increased by 60% while hiding in shadows. Uh, and then must have been the win. All noise generated when interacted with crawl spaces or while gathering items will be completely disregarded. Five charges. So the right side kind of seems to be like sort of like grandpa related. Uh, some of the other perks on the left side now. Another unique perk is the Storyteller. One second after t Sweet Talking Grandpa Maria will see all family members highlighted for 10 seconds, regardless if Grandpa uses his own ability or not. Uh, that could be decent. Tougher stuff. Toughness by 7. I see a lot of people. I can't really tell, but left side could be busted. I see Saboteur over there as well. Fuse lights when the fuse box is turned off, on or off. All family would be a lot of highlight perks, obviously. White meat, silencing nugget heals you for 15% HP. That is is that's gotta be a new one, right? That is very interesting. So stabbing a nugget can give you health. Uh dietitian up the middle is another unique perk. Any blood fed to grandpa after he has been sweet talked is 20% less effective for the next three feeds. That could be really tough as well. Um, but that obviously is, you know, a, a pretty tough perk to be wasting on, a slot on. Obviously, you have Sneaky Pete up the middle. Most people don't really care about stealth these days. Forward thinking after escaping the basement, valve handle and fuse locations are highlighted for 20 seconds. Eh, I mean, I guess. Uh, meter reader. When a family member operates a generator, both the family member and generator are highlighted for 30 seconds. That is really not a good perk at all. That is so bad. It is unbelievable, in my opinion. I don't know if I'm missing something, but... That sounds terrible. That sounds so useless. Uh, then we have, of course, do or die. When your last victim standing, proficiency and stealth is increased by 8 points. That is interesting. Because a lot of the when you're the last alive perks aren't really the best. But this is pretty big, actually. 8 proficiency? 8 stealth? 
That is interesting. Of course, you also have Choose Flight, uh, which still has its uses, but it's obviously not as good as it used to be. Sanguine Shadow, uh, when you drop below 60% health, it can be refilled slowly by staying hidden and motionless in shadows or hiding spots. Health received is 2 HP per second, up to 60%. It's always been a pretty strong perk, I suppose. Saboteur is obviously super strong, not bad. Taekwondo, that's obviously a super fun perk as well. Clear Eyes, clears up your vision to help identify a poison object. Nah, no one cares about that. Immunity, walking through a poison cloud or consuming poison. Yeah, that doesn't really matter too much. It's not a bad perk, but it's not that great. Be after being in cap, you get back up 50% quicker. Is that has that always been a perk? I don't even know. Uh, then of course you have a few more. Spotter. If family member, uh, if a family member moves within your close proximity where you are currently hiding, they will all uh, be highlighted for victims. Wait for all victims to see. How that range is six percent. That is hiding, as in, like, you could be in the bushes, I imagine, or does it actually mean a hiding spot? You also have strength, and then you have what doesn't kill you uh, is also up there. I'm trying to think, is there perks that are missing? Like, I don't see any proficiency perks. If I'm not mistaken, I don't see the single proficiency perk here. Obviously, she doesn't have, like, fast hands or anything like that. Oh, no, there it is. Highly skilled up the middle. I'm trying to think of what build would be the best, just going over everything we did. I really like having more toughness. She already has pretty high toughness, 35 toughness. You know, just like Ana, uh, 25 endurance, 30 strength, 20 proficiency, 20 stealth. So, realistically, you're going to be putting a lot into proficiency, a little bit into endurance. So, I am trying to think of what I want to do here, because obviously I love Taekwondo, and Saboteur is decent, so you can kind of build, like, almost like a Leland build, if you will. Uh, you will not get the proficiency doing that, though. No cells on the other side as well. And like I said, I really like this perk changeup. It's going to change a lot of the metas, and it's going to be like, I don't know what to do and all that, but I also kind of want to run something unique, like Blood Clot Cry... No cell or stunt doubles on this side as well. I love that bomb squads in the front. I don't know if any other characters have that, but this is interesting. Also, there's another perk I didn't see. Getting within 40 meters of Leatherface while his chainsaw is active applies the Noisemaker VFX to Leatherface. This per this allows the perk holder to track Leatherface for 15 seconds. Interesting. Uh, all right, so now at this point, looking at this side of the skill tree, we have forward thinking, we have white meat, we have tougher stuff. Storyteller is also there. Uh, and then now we have the choice. Do you want to go Saboteur and uh, Taekwondo? Or do you want to go to the right and get yourself uh, highly skilled? I think I want to go left, personally. This also, in general, has a very big, like, gen kicking build. Because obviously you can see the strength is up there. Sanguine Shadow is pretty good, too. Clear Eyes. If you go right, I don't think you can get the strength, though. But you also could get Choose Fly. This is tough. Uh, it's going to be so much fun respecking all these characters. Uh, I think this is going to be the build, though. This is. I think we're doing a generator kicking build with this. You also have this, Back for Blood. When sneak attacking Grandpa, you decrease family bond by an extra 30% and heal for 15%. Also, call me crazy, but is this not kind of pointless? When under 5% health, receive 10, 15 points towards toughness. You're not going to really be able to take any hits when you're that low, though. So with the left side of the skill tree, there's, you know, kind of a, a couple of different options you go. This kind of seems like more of a gen kicking build instead of Taekwondo, though. You can go uh, bin working out. Uh, endurance is going to be kind of important here. Uh, as far as if you're going pure gen kicking... And you're hoping someone else is going to make a play. You can obviously do this because that will max out your strength. You'd still have 30 proficiency. No real stealth. Endurance is at 30 and then your toughness is decent. And if you don't want to go with a gen kicking build, you could just go like Taekwondo and then possibly like tougher stuff. Which obviously then you drop that strength down. You increase that proficiency a little bit. Uh, and uh, you're really not looking too bad as like a pure proficiency build character. Uh, obviously, you're still going to get another 4 for toughness. It's probably something along the lines of what I would do. Maybe you can take off Taekwondo and put on Saboteur and turn this into kind of a uh, fuse build as well. But there are some options. I really think the left side of the skill tree for Maria seems to be the best. But obviously, as we play on, 
there's going to be so many different options, so many different video ideas going forward, and there's just a lot to this update with these perk changes, which I always did know was going to be the big meat of this update, of course. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, you know, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, ton more content on the way, probably a Maria and Hands video today, maybe playing a game or two of uh, each of them, if it's possible, because obviously there's going to be a lot of lobby dodging uh, until people get the characters they want, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video, but until next video, see ya!